just a button. This will be Friday, January 24th, if we continue. We'll go ahead and... So he can, that way he can rejoin us in theory. He's not even there. <laughs> He'll be there in just a moment. <laughs> oh, the fun repercussions from that one, too. Go ahead and keep it cracked. Apparently, I was wrong. You can get detention. I apologize. Alright. From there to that, we'll go ahead and jump through. Rome! I can like this. That's fine, Barnes. You need to look like uh, we said we got through most of the story with Athena, so we should be good. So let's yeah. do the speedy, catchy back up from here. Uh, music in museum, where does that come from? Muses. How many muses are there? Nine. 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 That's when they had a different muses for the different parts of the art, whether it was the uh, theater, drama, painting, sculpting, and stuff like that. And because humans were made out of clay and mud, eventually we had no special abilities unless it came from the muses. Hence, music is sound that comes from the muses, museum, collection of art that comes from, comes from the muses. June! Where do we get June from? Hera. Hera. Whose Roman name is? Hera. Juno. Juno. So Hera, Hera, the one that's right over yonder, whose Roman name is Juno, god of childbirth, god of marriage. Um, and with that, of course, being rather ironic since uh, she has lots of kids that are not hers because her husband is very friendly, which means she does not get along very well with her husband, which just makes it fun. And why is it we call June, uh, June? Why does it come from her? Because it's the month of marriage. That's where most marriages happen. It's the month of marriage. And then we got to this story, which was the, uh, the story of the mind, and what God we get mind from Forbes. Athena. Athena. I don't know if I explained it well yesterday with Athena, the picture that's up there, the way it's set up is that she's not tiny and it's not a giant horse. What it is is the fact that it's supposed to be perspective where she's far away and the horse is up close. It just comes out looking really weird. So it's not a tiny girl, it's just weird set up there. Then she's also the one that's over here where Brandon is and you have her with the sword and then the shield and she's wearing armor. On the shield, that's supposed to be Medusa because she's part of the story of Medusa. And then in this one over here, she's the one with the armor, has the shield, but this one has an owl on it. She's often seen with an owl in her pictures. Why would she have an owl in her pictures? What connection do you have? Jackson? She's like wise. Excellent. On. Going back to fables and the motif, the owl being wise. Thank you, Delphrens. You have the same idea here with the uh, owl being wise and her being God of wisdom. Same connection at that point. And where was she born from? Zeus's brain. And that was the fact that Zeus had himself a girlfriend, uh, and that was Mincenine, and then he uh, ended up playing. What game does he play with Mincenine? Animal. 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 Turned into the smallest animal, and they keep going back and forth. What animal does she become? Yeah. A gnat. What does he do when she's in that form? Yeah. 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 And, then find back. and then, of course, he's home free for a while until eventually, what does he get? A headache. And that's the headache. So, who does he go to for help? Some dude with an axe. Numa? Wait, who is? I mean, where is Lynn's name? In him somewhere still. No, did she die? Gabe? He goes to Hephaestus. Hephaestus, his son. And what does Hephaestus use to get rid of the headache? An axe. cut off his head, which are close. Emmanuel? That from the back of the head. There you go. He uses an axe. Wax into the top of him. He don't cut it off. That ain't silly. He puts an axe inside of him. <laughs> and as we're going up, and the little person jumps out from the inside, that would be Athena. And because Athena was working on making armor while on the inside, that is why she becomes the god of war. Who's the other god of war? Ares. over there. Ares. He's the god of bully war, the god of mean war, the god of unfair war, the, the god of kicking sand in someone's eyes and then kicking it in the kneecaps so they fall down on the ground and you laugh and run around. Whereas opposed to Athena was the god of fair war, the god of battles and strategy and stuff like that of being as smart and intelligent while you fight. So mind is just your thinker that gets connected to it. And then you have to bring it back, you had to open it up all the way for uh, yeah. Then that brings us to our last word before we get to our first fun story. And March. What god do we get March from? Kenny. <clears throat> Uh, 
Aries? Nicely done. What's his Roman name? Mars. Mars. It comes from Aries, the guy that's right over here, uh, who is the god of war, which is why he has a vulture on his shoulder. The vulture on the shoulder is because in a war, the stabby stabby, the dying, and the dead bodies. And how do you get rid of the dead bodies? The vulture. Little birds come and stuff like that. And then usually after you have all the dead bodies, you have the dogs that show up. You know, it's, they're the, the gobble, gobble, eat, eat. So usually he'll be shown with like vultures and wild dogs and stuff like that. Since he was the god of war, we have two definitions for March. What are the two definitions of March? Hard and calm? One is the time of year that comes up usually uh, before, or sorry, during spring, after winter, before you get to summertime. That time of year was thought to be the time controlled by Mars, controlled by Aries. Not because that's when you have wars, but because that's when the weather is so chaotic. That's when you have the most tornadoes, hurricanes. It'll go from being really cold to really hot to really cold. It seems like it's such chaos. They figured it had to be controlled by Aries. Like, obviously, this is when the gods were fighting each other all the time, so it was absolute chaos as far as that. And the other definition, Gia? Walking. Nicely done. When you're walking off to war. The war walk would be the other definition. Because when you were going off to fight in a battle, you were said to be marching to war. You were doing the walk of Aries or the walk of Mars, and eventually it got shortened just down to marching. So marching was thought to be doing the walk of Mars, because you're going to honor him. That's all the ten words. Now, the rest of the blue sheet is as we go through and do the stories, that's really filled in. Some of the stuff you already know, if you've been paying attention to the stories we've hit, as in like the first one on there, where it talks about what was the first thing to exist. Well, in Greek mythology, Numa was the first thing to exist. Chaos. So part of the stuff you guys already know. So to give you guys the more detailed background, we'll go back to the beginning of Greek mythology, how the whole thing begins. According to the Greeks, we have chaos. And how can we imagine chaos to make it easier? There you go. Big ball of pudding. It's hard to find a picture of a ball of pudding, so I have a cup of pudding. It's still delicious. So you have the ball of pudding. And it just sat out there doing pudding things forever until eventually it gets bored and splits to form the very first two gods that are out there. And who are the first two gods that splits the form? Gabe. Nicely done. It splits, and when it splits, it's like a giant amoeba. And it splits to form these two beings, Gia and Uranus. Now, Gia slash Gaia is also known as? There you got that one. As Gia, too. Kenny? Earth. Nicely done. That's Mother Earth. Are we Well, if it answers questions on the blue sheet. I say yes. If not, then no. You just pay attention to it. All depends if it's stuff that connects. And so it forms Earth, which is Gia, and then it forms Uranus. And what is Uranus? The sky. The sky. So it splits to form Earth and sky. These are the first two gods. According to the Greeks, Earth and sky were gods that you could speak to, that you could communicate with. They were also the Earth and the sky. So you have Earth and sky up there. To bar. Three, do we no, yeah, I won't go over the questions from that. But if you look, we can figure it out. I don't know. How. So you have Earth, Sky, and for time goes by, Earth and Sky hanging out, having a good time, until eventually they get bored. There's not much to go on. They get kind of lonely. So Mother Earth goes and talks to Father Sky. She's like, "Hey, you know how we've been hanging out, not doing much?" She's like, "Yeah, I've been having a good time." She's like, "Well, I've been getting kind of lonely." He's like, "Well, I understand." She's like, "I've been hearing rumors." What rumors have you been hearing? She's like, well, I've been hearing about these things called children. He's like, oh, what are those? She goes, I have no idea, but I'd like to get some of our own. He's like, okay, well, how do we do it? She goes, I don't know. I haven't taken that class yet. So they decide they're going to have the very first set of children. He goes, well, how do we go about having kids? She goes, I think we just look at each other and go, yeah, and then out come these children. He's like, that sounds far as me. So they go ahead and they take a look at each other. And they go, you ready? I'm ready. They go, and out popped the first children from Mother Earth, just <laughs> right out the top. This first set of children are called the Hecatonish years. Now, these are the first babies ever born anywhere to anything. Now, you, okay, because the, the first, they weren't really children themselves, because that was when chaos so split. So she gives birth to the first babies. They're humongous. They're bigger than mountains big. They were taller than actual mountains. They had two legs, but they had a hundred arms. So they became known as the hundred-handed ones. In Greek, hecaton, or in Latin, sorry, hecaton means 100, and then shire meant hand. 
So you have 100 handed. And they were called the 100 handed creatures. They had 100 hands and they had 50 heads. And they were humongous. And they come sprouting up out of Mother Earth. There's an actual photograph. <laughs> and there's actual, actual names. You don't have to know the names, but I've had kids who've asked in the past. I put them up there. Cultus, Gyges, and Briareus were the names of these three beings. And Mother Earth immediately falls in love with them. She's like, they're the beautifulest thing ever. And she gives them a little goochie, goochie, goo on the chin. They're like, and they slap their heads and run around. Father Sky looks at them and is like, hey, look at the... <laughs> and throws up. He's like, oh my god, those things are so ugly. Father Sky cannot stand to look at his own children because they're so horrifyingly ugly. He's like, all right, listen, you're going to put them way over there. I can't look at these things. And they're like, come on, man. He's like, what? He's like, don't do that. And so he has trouble looking at his own children. Mother Earth loves them, and they run around and play fetch, and like they throw a giant ball to each other, and a giant mountain, like, ah, and they catch it, and life is good. Years go by with them just running around on top of the Earth, throwing rocks to each other and stuff like that, going, because they're special beings, and things go well. <laughs> Until Mother Sky gets fed up with this, because every once in a while he gets distracted. He's like, hey, hon, let's forget, and he's like, ah, and threw up again. He's like, all right. I'm tired of throwing up every time I look down at you. So, we're going to have to solve this problem. Father God, this guy is good at solving problems. So he says, we're going to make this problem disappear. Mother Earth goes, well, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to do this. So he takes his giant sky hand, reaches down, and scoops out a giant chunk of Mother Earth from her stomach. And he takes a big rock and goes, look, kids, rock, and throws it in there. And the big ugly monsters go, blah, 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 and they go and jump into this pit. And he takes the big thing of dirt, throws it back on top of it, and makes them disappear. Never to be seen again until our next story. Now, this giant pit that he forms and creates is called Tartarus. Tar, tar, us. And this pit of Tartarus is, eventually becomes part of the underworld. But this is where he puts his kids deep inside of Mother Earth so he doesn't have to see them again. Once they're gone, life is happy. Now it's back to just Father Sky, Mother Earth, and things are going well. Mother Earth is a little sad because she can feel the little babies in there inside of her, but she learns to deal with it. Father Sky's happy because he's not throwing up all the time. He's like, I got really old. So as time goes by, eventually, Mother Earth talks to Father Sky again. She's like, hey, you know how I keep calling you Father Sky? He's like, yeah. He's like, no, you call me Mother Earth. He's like, yeah. She's like, well, we can't use those names if we don't have children. He's like, eh. I said we weren't going to talk about those. She's like, I know, but you know, that was the first one. That was like a prototype model. Let's try another one and see how things go. She's like, all right, we'll try it again. He's like, yeah, how, how do we do it again? She's like, I don't know, I'm taking this class. I think we just point at each other. He's like, all right, we'll do the pointing thing again. They decide they're going to have a second set of kids. They roll up their sleeves and they go, all right, ready? And out pop the second set of babies. The second set of babies, once again, there's three of them, but this time much smaller. Mother Earth is like, oh, you make them quite so big. So they're the ones who are as big as mountains. The second set would come up to the first set's like kneecaps. So they're like a fifth of the size. And when they pop out, they look much better. Two legs, one body, only two arms this time, one head, two ears, mouth, nose, and one eyeball right in the middle of their forehead. And the second set of children are called... Cyclops. The Cyclops. And the Cyclops are the second children that are born to Mother Earth and Father Sky. Now, with them, of course, Father Sky is a little bit on the nervous side. He has his eyes covered like this when they're born. He's like, they're here. And he's like, okay. He's like, yeah. like, they're weird, but they're not too bad. All right. So he decides we're going to keep these. And they're like, what do you mean keep them? He's like, don't worry about it. And so he's going to go ahead and keep these kids around. Things are going to go all right. And they're happy. They run around on Earth. Mother Earth is like, I get to keep my babies. And Father Sky's like, I get to keep my lunch down. And the baby's like, we get to not die. So it's like a win-win situation for everyone. And they run around until one day the Cyclopses realize they have a special ability. They can plunge their hands down into the Earth and grab chunks of metal, pull it out, and they can shape the metal with their bare hands. And they would use it to shape the metal into weapons. And they could make their own shields and swords and armor and stuff like that. So now, you have three brothers, because they were all males. They're immortal. They cannot die. And they have the ability to make sharp, pointy weapons and armor. What do you think they spend all their time doing? 
Yeah, stabbing each other. But I, when they get this straight, I can make a sword go over here to my brother and go, and stab him. And all he does is go, ow. <laughs> awesome. So that's all they end up doing, just running around like stabbing each other and going choppy, 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 and having a great time. The problem is they get a little careless sometimes, and they make big old sharp pointy spears. Like, and they would wing it at one of their brothers as hard as they can. And they'd go flying through the air, and the brother would be like, ha oh, oh. ha, and they'd go flying past them. But then the spear would keep traveling. It would go higher and higher and higher and higher until eventually, what does it hit? Father Sky. Father Sky. Who's just up there going, hey kids, how are you? <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Now, does it kill Father Sky? No. no, but it hurts and it makes him grumpy. He's like, hey, no more stabbing daddy. And they're like, sorry daddy, we'll try not to stab you as much. He's like, no. No stabbing of daddy. But then they get excited and they run off the top of a mountain and you try to chop your brother in half. And you're like, wee! And you go a little too high. And who do you hit? Father Sky. Father Sky. Like, ah! He's like, you cut daddy again. So Father Sky gets tired of being stabbed and poked and slashed by his children. So Father Sky decides it's time to solve this problem. How does Father Sky solve problems? It is the same thing again. He's like, we're going to get rid of this problem too. And the kids are like, well, you can get rid of us, too. He's like, shh, I have a surprise for you. And he goes, what is it? He goes, this. And he reaches out his hand, rips out this giant hole underneath the earth, and finds the pit again. What's the pit called? Tartarus. And you have this giant pit of Tartarus. And Lucy's like, hey, oh, ugly kids. And I'm like, oh, you threw up us spot again, Daddy. And then he goes and takes a big chunk of metal. And he's like, look, new kids, metal. And throws it into the pit. The Cyclops like, yay! And they jump in after the big chunk of metal. Once they do, he throws a big chunk of dirt back on top of them, pass it down, and goes, we're never going to talk about that again. Gets rid of the second set of children. <clears throat> so now both sets of children are down in, what's the place called? Tartarus. 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 So now they're both down in Tartarus. Well, Father Sky is happy. Tartarus. Mother Earth is a little on the sad side. But years go by, and Mother Earth starts thinking again, I really miss having children. So she builds up the courage and talks to Father Sky. She's like, hey, remember those kid things? She's like, hey. <laughs> She's like, I know, third time's a charm. I say we give it one more try, and this time I bet they're going to be perfect. He's like, all right. He's like, if you screw it up, we're done. She's like, okay. Like, let's try and make kids. They decide they're going to have one more set of children. So they roll up their sleeves again. He's like, have you taken the class yet? She's like, I haven't taken the class. She's like, I have just pointed. There's more pointing at each other. Like, I'm going to hurry your yard. And out pops the third set of children. <laughs> this time, though, they're much smaller. Not as big as a mountain. Not even up to the kneecaps of the other ones. They'd be about as big as a toe of the big, ugly monsters. They would come up to about the ankle of the Cyclops. They're really small in comparison. And instead of three, or six, or nine, we have twelve. There's a whole litter.